I started creating this app with Tanstack Start, and I wanted to use Superbase as database, obviously, and also as an authentication provider. But then I'd say, hey, why not doing it all over again from scratch using Drizzle, Better Off, and Neon? Because why not? So I did that, and let me show you what you can do. As usual, we have a sign-in button. I can go here to the sign-in page, and I can sign in. I already created an account. Hey. Welcome back. From here, I have now access to my user profile and I can update it. And also if I go on the community page, I see a different result because I'm inside this community, but I'm not in this one. And I can obviously click the join button. And from here, if I click log out, then the page knows that now I'm a guest. But how can I do that? Let's begin from the root of our project. Here, the logic is pretty much the same I did with both Superbase in the previous version and with Claire in the initial attempt I did, that is defining a before load inside our root. And in this method, we're basically making sure that our user has a session and we're passing the session down to the entire router. In this case, the session is a session object with the user or null if the user is not authenticated. And as a result, if we are on the profile page and I go click log out, there's not an explicit navigate here when I click log out, but when I do, I get redirected to the home page. And I can do that because in the profile route, I have the route guard. So here I've got my user session in the context. And if the user is not defined, I just redirect. So from the user menu, this is the logout button. I basically call sign out from better off. I invalidate my queries on React query, and then I invalidate my route. As a result, when the route gets invalidated, this function get executed again, this is null, and the redirect kicks in. But the biggest difference with the other approaches is what happens here inside the user query. Well, first of all, this is simply a function with query options from React Query, but then get user session is the function that is different. In this case, this is a server function that first of all uses get web request that comes from Tanstack Start to make sure that the server knows the headers they have in my call, and I can pass those headers to OAT that, unsurprisingly, is exactly what was defined here from better off. So with this simple method, I can create a function that runs on my server that knows if the user is authenticated and returns, again, the session that is session and user or null. The most important thing is that you want to await in the before load and make sure that before this function returns, you have already checked if you have a user. And I'm explicitly mentioning that because if you do not await and you go on the browser, let's see what happens. I'm logged in. You can see that from this menu on the right. But if I refresh the page, it first shows the sign-in button and then only when the result of the call arrives to the client, it updates the UI. Let me do that again. I refresh and there's the sign-in button. Instead, with the approach that actually awaits to have the data here in the before load, if I go back on the browser and I refresh the page, you see that this always remains visible and the sign-in button never appears. But if you're wondering how can I control whether to show the user menu or the sign-in button, well, this is the answer. I created a signing object. I can go on the header component and here you're gonna find that the user menu is inside sign-in and the signing button is inside sign out. What are those two components? Well, as simple as that. I have a client side hook that checks if the user is authenticated. If it's not authenticated, the signing component will return null. Otherwise, the children, obviously. And the sign out button pretty much does the same, but with the opposite. If authenticated, returns null. Otherwise, returns the children. But what is this user authentication hook? It is a hook that does pretty much the same call that was done in the root. Here is outquery.user, and here again, outquery.user. I get the user session and I pass it down to the hook. Now I've also added is authenticated as a kind of utility method that it's just a Boolean saying that if it is not or undefined, it's not authenticated. Otherwise, it is authenticated. So in short, we're making use once again of the same server function, but the first time it was called directly during server-side rendering, making sure that the user data was there before the page load. And now I'm reusing the exact same function, but inside a client-side hook. Let's quickly have a look at the sign-in function. Here I'm calling this from a mutation, and the mutation is triggered from Tanstack form, 
But for the scope of this video, it doesn't really matter as all you want to see is that I'm directly using the auth client and firing the signing.email coming from better auth. And the auth client is simply created by using create auth client from better auth react and passing these as the base URL. And this is exactly where our Tensile Star application backend is gonna be deployed. I will go more in detail about the configuration at the end of the video. And by the way, if you want to quickly also see the sign up, it follows pretty much the same logic. I've got another form, but this time I'm calling sign up instead of sign in and I'm passing email password and a username. Now, to be fair, this is the first time I'm using Drizzle and better off. So I took a little bit of inspiration from another repository that is made by Carlos Ziegler, sorry for the pronounce, that you can also find here on GitHub. And to be precise, he's using kind of a slightly different approach for the authentication guard that is basically wrapping the authenticated routes inside this old provider. And here he's doing the navigate. This is a slightly different variation of doing pretty much what I was doing in the root. So getting the user data and then in the profile page, throw in the redirect if the user is not authenticated. But speaking of having other repositories as example, I created an awesome list, which you can find here. That is basically a list containing some resources about Tansac Start. And if you scroll down a little bit, this is the template I was referring to. Here you can also find a badge with the latest version up to date so that you don't take example from code that has breaking changes or it's just outdated. But let's go back to our project because there's something else I want to show you. We only want authenticated user to join the Nadiva community, right? And for example, if I'm not an authenticated user and I click join, something has to happen. In this case, I'm just showing this task that says you need to be logged in. And if I click sign in, it brings me back to the signing page. But let's have a look at the code. I'm kind of cheating. I'm just checking if the user is not authenticated. This is the handler behind the join button. And if the user is not authenticated, I manually show this nice task with the signing button. But let me show you what happens if I just comment out this code and I fire the join mutation, even if I'm not authenticated. I try to click the join button again. And now I see a different error. And actually, if I go on to the network tab and I try again, you see that my server function returned 401. How can I do that? If you watched the previous video, you might already know about middlewares. And in particular, let me open the join community function. This is the server function that using Drizzle simply inserts a new record to make sure that the user is inside the community. But here I'm not checking anything about the user. And that's because I'm doing that in the middleware. And that's something I really like about this builder pattern and how it is easy to compose these elements. As here, I can define my server function, then a validator, so that when I look into the function, this is the payload that I get from the front end. But if I want the user, I can just add a middleware that in this case is the user required middleware that makes sure that in the context, I have the user session with my user value and I can use it to get the user ID. And it's not just returning the user, but also making sure that they have a user. And to do that, I'm composing this middleware with another middleware. And the first middleware is actually using the same function I was showing you in the beginning. So to wrap up, there's a function that makes sure given the user that is doing the request, it checks if there's an active session. I can use it in the client to do the user authentication hook, but it can also create a middleware that uses this exact same function and gives to each server function I want to create the context with the user session. But here we know that the user might be logged in or not. That's why this can also be null. And this is useful for the cases where you might want different result if the user is logged in or not, but the user might not be logged in. Instead, in the join community function, I want to make sure that the user is actually logged in. So I can reuse and compose all the tiny bits of logic I've written in the previous steps and here return 401 if I'm not logged in or the user session if available. And here you notice it's no longer null. And by composing all of that, the final logic that you have, it's so simple and so nice to read. If you're interested in how to do that with Drizzle and better off, I'm not gonna go step by step in this video, but let me show you a couple of files you have to configure. And also make sure to follow the official documentation and just ask a question if you have any problem. The most important steps are to configure Drizzle in the Drizzle config file. 
Here I defined where I want to be the schemas and where the migrations have to be. But let me quickly analyze the schema. So the directory that is pointed out here is just an empty index, but let me show you in the tree. Here inside lib, database and schema, I have all my individual schemas. And in the outer index, I'm creating the drizzle object. So here again, I'm passing the schema and the database URL. And this is pretty much the same regardless of the framework. It is in times like start, but I think in Next.js is exactly the same. Just follow the documentation, you're gonna get there. Speaking about authentication, this is how I set up better auth. First of all, I have this auth file that is calling better auth and passing the drizzle adapter for the database. Now I might have done something silly, maybe renames. I'm not entirely sure why I had to pass each single one of these tables, but I just did that and this kind of works. Um, maybe this can be improved. Let me know in the comments if I did something wrong here, but it actually works. And also make sure that the React Start Cookies plugin is here so that the server can properly read the cookies coming from Start. But the real big difference you might have in setting up better off on start as compared to maybe other framework as Next.js is that you also need this special file that has to be inside the route slash API folder and then has to be called off.dollar.ts. You can even set a slash here, it doesn't really matter. But overall, the idea is that you're exposing an API with Tansac Start that each time you're firing a get call or a post call, take the request and pass it to the auth object created with better auth. If you want to learn more, the code is obviously hosted on GitHub and available for everyone. And actually, I also wanted to add more features and describe them in some issues so that why not? We can even collaborate together on this project. But that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have any kind of question, just write a comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And see you in the next video. Bye.